Hey, Mark Milan here and glad to connect with you today. Today I'm continuing to summarize the final chapter of a book I've written called Leading Worship, 10 Simple Truths. And this is chapter 10. The title of the chapter is The Mission is People. And so I want to read a verse that kicks off the chapter. I want to talk about it just for a little bit and then I want to leave you with a few questions that perhaps can help you think through this area of your leadership when it comes to leading worship and leading people in worship. So uh, this is Ephesians chapter 4 verse 12 and it says this, for the equipping of the saints and the building up of the body of Christ. Um, the equipping of the saints, meaning the church, the people in the church. So in this chapter what I do is I slice right down the middle of what I think creates two different groups of leaders when it comes to leading worship. In one group, you have what I would call the task-oriented people. I believe I'm a part of that group. Uh, we are the ones who like to write lists and get things done and check them off when they are done. So we're bent a little bit more towards the task and the mission. On the other side, of the list, you have people who are more bent towards the relational connection, the gathering, the hanging out, uh, just that being around each other kind of deal. Now, things have to get done and people need to feel connected. And so how do these two things work? Does the mission come before the people or do the people come before the mission? Is one more important than the other? So the answer is, all of the above. The mission matters, but so do the people. And so I try to tackle in this chapter what I believe is the right mixture of how both should apply. And here's why I say that. Um, there's a passage in scripture that says that you and I are God's masterpiece created for good works. So we are God's masterpiece that defines who I am, but I am created to do good works, which he prepared for me in advance. So there's things I need to do and things I have to get done. In the Old Testament in the Psalms, it said, Lord, remind me of how numbered my days are. Paul talked about God evaluating the quality of our work. So what we do in ministry does matter, and we will be held accountable for what we get done in ministry. But here's the catch how we get those things done matters to God, and how people are treated, and how people are uh, used, or how people are abused matters to God deeply as well. So God wants us to care for people, and he wants us to pastor and shepherd people while we get stuff done. So that is usually where the tension arises. I have to get stuff done, but I need people to get it done. How can these things coexist? That's what I talk about in the chapter. So if you want to get my thoughts on it, you'll have to read that. But I want to lead you with a couple of questions as we kind of conclude these series of videos. And this last one is the mission is people. So here's, here's a couple of questions for you. Are you using ministry to build people or are you using people to build ministry? And then here's another question for you. How do you measure the balance of pursuing the vision of your team versus the health and care of your team? The bottom line is it takes people to accomplish the vision and it takes people to accomplish the mission of the vision, right? People matter to God. He died for people. And I've always said uh, that there's never going to be a mission statement that God gives us that is greater than the people he intends to use for it. I'll say it again. There's never a mission statement that God gives to us that is greater than the people he calls to accomplish it. So God calls people to a vision and mission, and he uses people to accomplish a vision and a mission. So the mission or the vision is the direction, it's the what we have to get done, and the people plays a huge part, really the most critical part, is how those things get done. And every person matters, 
Uh, one of the statements I say in the book is, what you are doing matters to God, but what you are becoming matters more. And sometimes, if, if you're not careful, if I'm not careful, I can become a pretty bad person when I'm trying to accomplish something quickly and with passion. And before you know it, if I don't look to my left or my right, I, I, I don't realize how I'm affecting the people around me to get those things done. That's a little bit more of kind of my story and my journey. Maybe yours is different. Maybe for you is you are just nurturing and caring and you're loving those people around you and, and, and that is awesome. But maybe stuff is just not getting done. And maybe the, the people you have on your team that are the task people, maybe you're driving them crazy. Cause they're like, I like hanging out and I like talking, but we came here to do this. Uh, a great example of that is at rehearsals, right? People come to rehearsals to rehearse and get the music ready. So um, sometimes if we're not careful, we can just be all business. All right, let's go ahead, let's get a sound check, let's do this, and there's no connecting. And then we could be on the other extreme of that where we're just hanging out and man, what's going on? And then we, we preach a sermon for 45 minutes and there's been no rehearsing. So I think that's where the tension of all of this lies and that's really what I tackle in this chapter. Man, so I hope that not only this one, but all the other videos that I've posted on here help you get a summary and a conversation going for the book. Again, the book, uh, Leading Worship, 10 Simple Truths, it's available on Amazon. Uh, if you like it, would you share it with someone? Would you let someone know that these videos are available as well? Thank you for letting me be a part of your day in each one of these, and until next time.